Hello and welcome to this webinar for A-Level Film Studies. My name is Callum Strachan. I am the course leader of A-Level Film Studies and over the course of this presentation I will be introducing you to the subject of A-Level Film Studies. So the first question that I often get asked is why should students study A-Level Film? There's numerous reasons for why students should consider this subject. Many academics and critics consider film to be one of, if not the main cultural innovation of the 20th century. It started out with very humble beginnings as a circus sideshow attraction and is now one of the most significant forms of media and entertainment across the world. It's a medium that is enjoyed by millions, if not billions of people and is an industry that makes billions of dollars around the world. But film is so much more than just a form of entertainment. Film can be a powerful and culturally significant medium that can inspire a range of responses from fans and audiences, from intellectual responses, the way that films make us think, to emotional reactions. A-level film studies then offers students the opportunity to investigate how film both as a powerful medium of representation, a method of communicating ideas, and as an aesthetic artistic medium. The way that the course does this then is by introducing learners to a wide variety of films of different styles, genres, eras, countries of origins, to give students a broad knowledge and understanding of film and the range of responses that films can generate. So as I said, students study films including mainstream and independent American and British films, films from the past and from the present, as well as films from around the world, non-English language European films and non-English language international films, such as from South America. And in the second year, students develop this further by looking at all manner of other styles of films and film movements. So the aims of the course are as follows. Over the course of the two years, students develop knowledge and understanding of a diverse range of films from different countries and eras. Students learn about film practices in national, global and historical contexts. They learn how films relate to their social, cultural and political contexts. Students will be taught how films represent people, societies and cultures. They will be taught about the different ways that spectators respond emotionally and intellectually to films, how film can be appreciated as an aesthetic artistic medium, how films generate meanings and responses, as well as learning how to apply different critical and theoretical approaches to a variety of films. A frequent question that I get asked about the course is, what will I study? So over the two years of study, students will look at what we call three components. Each component focuses on different types of films and aims to engage students in a broad range of films and film styles. So over the two years, the components are varieties of film and filmmaking, global filmmaking perspectives, and component three is all about production and is a coursework non-exam assessed component. In each of these components, students have to study and apply the three core study areas of film. So they apply these to every film that they look at across the two years. The three course areas then are key elements of film form, that is cinematography, mise-en-scene, editing sound and performance, the elements that are always there, always working when we watch films and often work to provoke responses from spectators, for instance, to make us laugh, to make us scared, to make us excited. The second core area is meaning and response. This focuses on how films function as both a medium of representation and as an aesthetic artistic medium. And the third core area is the context of film. That is social, cultural, political, historical and institutional contexts. The circumstances in which films are made, what is going on at society, in society at the time the film is made, how a film relates to its historical context, 
are, is all considered within this core area. In addition, some topics also require students to study what are called additional specialist study areas. These are specific critical and theoretical approaches that students are asked to apply to films within particular topics. This includes uh, critical approaches such as auteur theory, narrative and spectatorship. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what students study in the different components. So for component one, which is varieties of film and filmmaking, in this component, there are three sections, each section relating to a different topic of film studies. Section A then focuses on Hollywood cinema between 1930 and 1990, and students are required to study and compare one Hollywood film produced in the golden age of Hollywood between 1930 and 1960, and then one film produced between 1961 to 1990, the era of the new Hollywood. Section B is all about American film since 2005 and for this topic students are required to study one contemporary example of American independent cinema and one contemporary example of a mainstream American film. In the first year students are only required to study the independent film and then in the second year we add to this topic by studying the mainstream American film. Section C then is British film since 1995 and for this topic students are required to study two British films produced after 1995. For component two, global filmmaking perspectives, in the first year students only do one topic for this component, they only study one film for this component and that is a film called Pan's Labyrinth which is our one non-English language European film. The majority of this component is studied in the second year and includes topics such as experimental film, silent cinema and documentary film, in addition to studying another example of a non-English language foreign film. For each of these components, the films that have been chosen have been selected because of their suitability for study and because they reflect a diverse range of genres, filmmakers and different eras and countries of origin. So the films have been chosen because in my view, they give students the best opportunity to do well in their exams and to they provide the best opportunities for students to study the topics that are necessary for them to achieve high grades within their exams. Component three then, which is the production, the coursework, the non-exam assessed component. Production work is a crucial part of the course and is integral to learners' study of film. Uh, through, throughout the study, across the two years, students are taught about a diverse range of films. The purpose then of Component 3 is for students to apply practically what they have learnt about these films, to take their theoretical knowledge of these films and apply it in a practical circumstance. For this component then students are given a brief from which to work by the exam board and from this they need to develop their own ideas to produce an original screenplay for a short film of their own creation. The assessment for the coursework then for this students are required to produce a complete screenplay for a short film a digital storyboard for a key section of the screenplay where students go out and photograph what their film would look like if they were actually to make it. And finally, an evaluation of the production work. So those three pieces of work form the coursework that students complete for this component. And that brings an end to this web webinar. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I hope that you have found it informative. And if you have any further questions about A-level film studies that you would like to ask me, my email address is on the bottom of these posters. It's callum.strachan at chichester.ac.uk. If you have any further questions, I would be very happy to answer them. Otherwise, thank you very much, and I hope to see you sometime in the future.